Top of the morning to you, or afternoon or evening, whenever you may be watching. My name is Scott, I represent the SL in Gameslam, here with... Austin, I'm the AM. And today we wanted to bring you a special edition because I have been reading the news and recently we saw that Pokemon Sword and Shield have reached the third highest sales of all the Pokemon generations. Partly due to the quarantine, but also just, you were saying the Switch. Is yeah, the, kind the of Switch has it. sold so well, everybody is grabbing it for their kids because they know Pokemon. It's a staple. It's a staple. And Austin was kind enough to lend the studio with the Sergio-themed N64 and Game Boy Color. So today, we were sparked to do some power rankings for our top five generations of the eight uh, we're not going to be including Stadium or Pokemon Pinball, Pokemon TCG, uh, just the, the main games. And we're going to jump into our top five. Let's freaking do it. So my number five would probably be Gen 4. It's, it's okay. It's better than a lot of the recent ones in my opinion. It's I just kind of fell out of Pokemon after Gen 3. And then in high school, we all picked it back up at Gen 5, so maybe that's why I hold Gen 5 a little bit higher. Right. But for me, number 5 has got to be Gen 4. And what I remember about Gen 4 specifically, because I didn't have an SP, was that was the first game that I had like the backlight consistently, because I played all the way through 3 just with my OG GBA. Yeah, the last Pokemon games that we had really bought was the Gen 3 ones and then just left it because I grew out of Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, it's funny thinking back to Gen 4 because we were in like middle school at the time and I was kind of falling out of it too and I remember thinking like by the time I'm a you know elder statesman in high school I probably won't be playing Pokemon anymore and uh, look where we are now. Yeah, I just rediscovered it after we had gotten back into uh, black and white in high school and it was a good game, and then I just hold it a lot higher than a lot of the more recent ones. Well, that brings me to my number five, which is Black and White. Um, what I remember so much about that game was the release. It was our sophomore year, it was my brother's senior year, and for them, like for my brother and his friend group, they got so into the competitive side of the game. So this was the first game I dove into, like, the EV training, the um, getting the held items, working on those kind of combinations. And also, it was just a cool story. I feel like Jetsis was, like, the really the worst, like, bad guy of all the Pokemon games, the most, like, evil. Um, and it's been a while since I've played it, but I remember, like, N's role was really cool, and there was Jetsis. So, Black and White was really cool for, like we said, when we were getting back into it. I know I already touched on it, but with Gen 4, I just felt like the Pokemon weren't as fresh, but when we discovered Black and White, it, yeah, they just kind of seemed like better mm -hmm. presented ideas to me. And we really got back into the cards, too, we did. With, with Black and White. So, that's probably another reason I hold it in high regard, is seeing like Reshiram and Zekrom and um, mm -hmm. What was the other one? Kiram. Like, we were getting the tins with those Pokemon, the, uh, the EXs. So, I, I really enjoyed Black and White. Had to make the top five. But I promise my rankings is not just from five to one. And then we'll jump back over to me. Black and White is my number four. So, we'll just keep talking on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But my favorite memory was. So, we had just gotten some big projects and then. Scott was on my uh, in my group for one of our STEM projects and with another buddy we were just playing through Gen 3 and we had just got really hyped. We heard Gen 5 was coming out mm -hmm. and then we just spent so much time researching it. Do you remember? We yeah. were going on Cerebi looking like every day in class oh, yeah. when we were supposed to be working. Just looking up all the new Pokemon. Yeah, I don't know how the project turned out but we, we got real hype. I, I remember that too. Just the the level of hype for the release of Gen 5 was huge because I don't think I got Diamond on day one, 
but black and white, I do think yes. I got a, it was a day one purchase. And it really might be the hype that holds it higher in regards to Gen 4. But well, just, I want to touch on that yeah. project real quick. <laughs> it was uh, for this bridge building competition. Oh, good times. We built our bridge and then another classmate broke our bridge. Yeah, yeah, that was absolute sabotage. Uh, this this has been well documented, but it doesn't matter. Complete, complete sabotage. We goofed around playing Pokemon instead of working on our bridge, which I would say was more rewarding, anyways. Mm -hmm. Some things you can't learn in the classroom. But I wanted to build on what you were saying about the hype, because that brings me to, to my number four, which is Sun and Moon. Um, for me personally, I had kind of a second drift from Pokemon similar to the Diamond and Pearl era when we got to Gen 6 because I played black and white until the end of high school and then I didn't have a 3DS when I went to college. So I missed the drop of X and Y and I also just wasn't too intrigued. It might have just been the name of the versions like X and Y and we had just had black and white. They were getting a little stale in my opinion. And I got back into it watching some YouTubers in 2015, 2016, so the year before and the year of Sun and Moon, and that built me into that hype circle to where now five years after Black and White, I was just on the edge of my seat for a new release. And I gotta talk about the release real quick because I was in college at the time, I called my local Walmart and I asked them if they had Sun and Moon. They said, yes, we will have it at midnight. I go to Walmart, there's like two other guys a little bit older than me pacing around the, the game section, like a couple of vultures. And the woman uh, comes to the cash register in the game section. She says, uh, are you guys here for the Pokemon game? We're like, yes. And she's like, oh, some kid uh, called about that earlier. And I was like, that was me. So I ended up getting it right then and played probably two hours after the midnight release. And it ended up being a pretty good game. Um, you know, if talking about just game experience, it might not be my number four, but just the hype was so big. And I was into so many YouTube channels that were covering the game that uh, I enjoyed it and also thought the Z moves were a cool like new wrinkle to it. So I played X and Y when they came out and I just want to touch on this because you said that Pokemon just felt stale. Yeah. I, when I played through X and Y it felt really stale and then when I played through Sun and Moon it was just like a fresh new take that I think Pokemon right. needed. Just yeah. Those island challenges. I think that was cool yeah because we had been through like the gym challenge so many times and also you had like the Alolan Gen 1 Pokemon, so you had some like nostalgia there. And uh, it, it was a cool take on the region, because I think your character is like from Kanto and he moves to the Alolan region. So I think you played through Ultra Moon too, right? Oh or yeah. At least some of it. Oh yeah, So I played through the whole game. How, where do you compare? Ultra Moon or Ultra Moon? Moon? Ultra Moon was a big letdown for me, personally. Um, and it's funny because I, of course, wasn't as excited as Sun and Moon because it wasn't a new experience, but I was expecting it to be more of a sequel to that story. And it turned out to be just like an alternate, kind of like a different ending with those, like, I don't know where those guys were from um, that were not from the Aether Foundation, but they were kind of the antagonist. Um, so playing through essentially the same game one year later had that staleness with just a slightly alternate ending and I also have to say I was sick of uh, Team Skull by yeah. that I was just yep. like I was so over Team Skull. Team Skull is one of the worst. Yeah. Oh, what's the name of the team in Sword and Shield? Yell. Yell is team the Yell. absolute bottom. Yeah that was Team Skull 2.0. Yeah. Not a fan. Okay, so now we are on our number three spot and we are both in agreement after some long drawn out conversations that Gen 1 is going to be our, Yeah, Gen 1 is going to be our number three spot. Pull up the yellow version here. So my thought on it, and then I'll let you jump in, was after recently playing Gen 1 on the channel, 
Um, I got exposed to some of its flaws, being someone who has been spoiled with the newer games. And the biggest frustrations I had was the leveling curve, where gym leaders would just jump up and you wouldn't catch them unless you grinded. You wouldn't even catch them by bat battling the trainers in the routes. And the other side was the lack of move sets for certain Pokemon, where you really had to manage your TMs. For example, I caught a Voltorb early on, and Electro just doesn't learn Thunderbolt or Thunder unless you have the TM. Mm -hmm. So that got frustrating over time. Of course they fixed that in later games. And I don't want to hate on Gen 1, because it was my first Pokemon experience. And it is the first series of Pokemon games, and I think set a lot of precedents to come. Right. Like I said, spoiled by the newer games. And just to reiterate this, we were both 95 babies, so, I don't know, five, six years old, Pokemon was at its absolute peak. Mm -hmm. There's never been another time that I can think of that something of this magnitude is... I agree, and it's one of those things that's kind of funny when you think now where there's not really a consistent game that like everyone is playing. Um, you've got your lane of like Fortnite, which we're like, boo. Mm -hmm. You've got your lane of Call of Duty people. Um, I'm probably missing a few really popular games. You've got the like online gaming, like League yeah. of Legends. The point is like everybody is kind of divided, but... Back, back in the day, back everyone the day. came together for Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was just kind of a given. Everyone mm. played the games, everyone had the cards, and like Austin said, it was just like the peak. And that takes us to our number two spot, which would be Gen 3. So good. It's my OG Sapphire. Which, the nostalgia of Gen 1 made me want to hold it higher than Gen 3, but mm -hmm. in reality, Gen 3 is just... It flows better. It's yeah. A better experience altogether. Yeah, yeah, I think. So we both put this at number two. Um, I had it a little more firmly number two, and, and he was battling back and forth. And, you know, at this point, Gen 3 is definitely still very nostalgic for me. Um, I remember, and this pains me to say as a collector who, like, has some of these boxes, I remember, oh gosh. I had, of course, the Sapphire box when I got the game. It was in second grade, spring of 03, and I remember my class had a bin that we could recycle in, like different cardboard and like probably plastics, like two different bins. And I remember bringing in the box to recycle, probably to like flex for the girls in my class or something. And I remember, like, when I put it in there, how the light hit it and everything, and I was like, wow, that looks cool. And I just never put a second thought to it mm -hmm. and recycled a gorgeous box. Yeah, nowadays, I think both Ruby and Sapphire are commanding above 100 bucks, complete box. Well, you know what is priceless? Giving a hoot about the environment. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> what I love about Gen 3 is... I mean, we're gonna we're gonna bury the lead on what our number one title is, but earlier games had hit Team Rocket multiple times, and having the division between Team Magma and Team Aqua, I felt like it was the first game where having the different versions gave you a different experience. Whereas Gens One and, and Gen Two, you essentially played the same story no matter which version you mm -hmm. had. So with Gen 1, it was like, it set up what Pokemon was. Gen 2 made it better. Mm -hmm. Gen 3, it was just like, wow, this is so colorful. I'm on this yeah. exotic island playing Pokemon. This oh, is yeah. sweet. And I remember uh, the first time I ever saw it, I was at a soccer game, and my cousin's friend was playing it, and I was just watching him play. I was like, what is that? Because <laughs> at that time, we didn't have the internet, so I just found out about it by right. seeing that. I was like... I have to get this game. I was so hyped. Mm -hmm. So hyped. Oh man, and I remember getting my first starter deck for the cards too. Um, I think I got the Blaziken deck, and it was the first time they switched from like the rectangular boxes to the ones that like slightly went in. It was almost like a pentagon, I guess. 
Um, and it's definitely not the right shape. But I, I just remember it had this new clean look and you could buy the Magma Packs or the Aqua Packs. And I will say the show went downhill a little bit, mm -hmm. but uh, Gen 3 was awesome. Yeah, Like I was saying earlier, like right about that time, 99, 2000, Pokemon was at its peak. Mm -hmm. And then Gen 3 came and it was like the first step down the ladder. It was Not so that it was necessarily awful. Yeah, it's I know, I know what you're saying. It, it no longer was capturing like everyone, mm -hmm. um, but also it brought some new people in. Um, you know, people who are probably a little bit younger than us. I hear a lot who this was their first game. Um, so, also underrated. I mean, they've done a great job with all the generations. But I think the cartridges in Gen 3 between this, Emerald, and Ruby mm -hmm. were just absolutely beautiful. They, they did a great job with that. So that brings us to our number one generation that we are also in unison for. Gen 2, Gold, Silver, and Crystal. And Austin just said this was a game that improved upon Gen 1. Gen 1 set the precedent, Gen 2 took it and made it better. New graphics. Like this, I think looking back, this is the only time where I felt like these new Pokemon are so amazing and yes. interesting. Yes. I sort of felt that for Gen 3, but I felt it strongest for Gen 2. I did too, and you mentioned something with Gen 3, which was that we didn't have the internet back then. Mm -hmm. So think of a time, boys and girls, where you have no rumor mill of what's going to happen in the future games unless you have Nintendo power and maybe you have some rumors through you know your, your friends, your friend group. What I remember in Nintendo power was in one of the editions we had, they had just some screenshots of Gen 2 and it had Japanese text in like the menu bar and in the like the move sets and stuff. But just looking at it, having the mystery of what these new Pokemon were, because the only Gen 2 Pokemon we had been introduced to, Togepi and Meryl, uh, from the show. And I think Meryl was in uh, Pokemon the first movie, uh, yeah. Pikachu's Vacation. So there was that mystery. Snubble too, sorry. Oh yeah, Snubble. yeah, there were a few. And I'm uh, technically Ho-Oh in the first episode. <laughs> but... I experienced nostalgia for the very first time in, in my entire life when I played Gen 2 when, like you said, you get that second adventure and you mm -hmm. go back to Kanto. Yeah, just to reiterate, it's we're getting that second story, we're getting better graphics, mm -hmm. and now we're getting these new Pokemon. And like I said at the time, this was the peak of Pokemon. Everybody's into the show. The show, right. I think, kind of made the experience ten times better. Yeah. I mean, it did the same for Gen 1, but like mm -hmm. I said, Gen 2 is just the absolute peak. It kept it rolling. It's probably my favorite game of all time, and we haven't even mentioned the soundtrack, mm -hmm. which all Pokemon games have pretty good soundtracks. Gen 1 is amazing, 3 is very solid too, but Gen 2's soundtrack, peak Game Boy Color, um, my goodness, I hear just the first undertones of the opening screen and, and it gets me it gets me going. So uh, like I said, not an overstatement. Gold version, my favorite game of all time. I wouldn't say it's the best game I've ever played, but it's my favorite for some mm -hmm. of the reasons we've talked about. I think we should also go on the record to say that the general trend is that they made red and blue and then yellow came out. I'd say like those second games coming out of mm -hmm. each generation were the absolute pinnacle of each generation, except like you were saying earlier, you thought Ultra Moon wasn't as good as Moon. Yeah, yeah, that that one let me down a little bit, but I'm with you with, with some of these earlier games, Yellow, Crystal, Emerald, Emerald Platinum. Yeah. They, those were the pinnacle. They did a great job of just, okay, we got a good thing going, how do we tweak it mm -hmm. a little bit? And then if I think we wanted to say the absolute best Pokemon game, we would both be in agreement that it's Heart Gold and Soul Silver. I'm actually gonna disagree. I, I'm gonna stay I'm gonna stay OG. And the reason is for the music. Um, of course you get the same soundtrack, but I mean 
Here, here's another thing I'll throw out there, all right? I remember back in the day, I think nostalgia is what overwhelms it for me. I remember being on a camping trip with my brother. We both had our GBAs. It was like a Friday, and because of the time feature, we were able to get like the night Pokemon. And then I remember waking up in the morning and having the bug catching contest on Saturday and listening to that national park music from the original game. If I turn it on right now, I feel like a kid again. So I enjoyed Heart Gold and Soul Silver a ton because it came out, you know, 10 years later. And that was like what I was talking about earlier when we were in high school. We just kind mm -hmm. of found out that those games were coming out, so we got into that through Hard Gold and Soul Silver, and then yep. that's when we eventually got into Black and White. But yeah, okay. Nostalgia aside, can you still say that you would take Crystal over Soul Silver and Hard Gold? Yeah, I think okay. I would. I mean, I guess I can't say nostalgia aside. Like, if I was in a court of law, I'd have to, mm -hmm. you know, take a uh, take a break. I, I'd take Crystal too, but Hard Gold and Soul Silver just took what Gen 2 did mm -hmm. and then kind of just copied and pasted it over onto Gen 4 and yeah. Gen 5. It just worked so much better. It did, but you know, there's other aspects too. Like you could use this game in uh, Pokemon Stadium 2. Of and course. Just, just some of that overlap and I'm definitely drowning in nostalgia, but mm -hmm. it's, it's my favorite gaming experience I've ever had. So there you have it, people. The undisputed top five generations. Uh, of course, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. I've seen I've, some people who actually like Diamond and Pearl the best. Um, I'm sure some would have X and Y in their top five or Sword and Shield from the recent experience. So let us know yours in the comments. Of course, we're the experts here, but we'd love to uh, get some other perspectives as well. Yeah, and this is probably our first video together in like Four or five years. It, it, it has so been a long if, time. if you enjoyed this, let Scott know and I might show up a little bit more. We'll keep it rolling. Yeah, I think uh, there's been a lot of me gargling with a quiet co-host named Sergio. So we had to bring the expert back in. So with that, we'll see you guys next time. Game Slam, signing off. So now we are on number three. I think we're both in agreement now after some discussion yep. that Gen 3 is both of... Or no, wait, I have that mixed up. Gen 1! <laughs> I just scrambled. <laughs>